Welcome. Today we're going to talk about one of the peripherals of the 80 mega 328 microcontroller, which is the timer counter. Specifically, we will talk about timer counter zero. One of the most frequent tasks of microcontrollers is related to timing. This is an example. We have a traffic light and we have a blinking pattern. And of course, if we want to achieve this, all we would need to do is uh, make a program like this set bit in i register and clip bit in i register turn it turn on a bit turn off a bit and then repeat the cycle of course this would not be detectable by the human eye we have also seen this solution um, we have introduced uh, nested cycles where we can calculate um, some sort of delay and of course uh, since we're making a delay then it would be uh, visible um, here's a flowchart of this program. Uh, we turn it on, then we wait, then we turn it off, then we wait. Assuming that we have a 1 MHz um, frequency in the microcontroller, uh, the frequency of this program would be 4.88 Hz. And this is barely visible to the human eye. We can start losing the awareness of a blinking signal if it's greater than, than 20 Hz. If we run this program in Arduino Uno, uh, the Arduino Uno runs at, 70, at 16 megahertz, and of course this would result in a frequency of 78 Hz. So this would not be visible in an Arduino Uno. This solution has mainly two problems. The first is that we're wasting processor. We're only doing nothing in order to wait a certain period of time. And the second part is that calculating the timing, as you have seen, is really complicated. So now we will see how to do this task using the built-in timer counter peripheral. The microcontroller in the Arduino Uno has three timer or counters. Timer counter zero and a timer counter two, both of them are 8-bit timers. We also have timer counter one. And of course, since it is a 16-bit timer, it has more capability to count. So let's start with the timer counter zero. This is an 8-bit timer which means that it can count from 0 to 255, which is the maximum number allowed in an 8-bit uh, register. It has different modes of operation. It can count time, or as we have seen, machine cycles, and it can count them in two different ways, basically. Uh, we refer to these modes as the normal mode and the ZTC mode. But also, it can count external events, hence the part counter. And it can also generate a pulse width modulation signal. This timer can generate three interrupt sources. It can tell us when the counter overflows. We're going to see that the timer goes from 0 to 255. So it's going to start counting from 0, 1, 2, 3. And once it reaches 255, since there is no number uh, greater than 255 that fits in an 8-bit register, it's going to return to 0. And this is known as an overflow. So when this happens, the microcontroller can be interrupted by the timer. Also, it can interrupt us when a desired A value is um, encountered. So we can say, I want to be interrupted when a certain value is achieved by the counter. So we can say, if the counter uh, counts 150 counts, uh, then I want to be interrupted. And not only that, we can also be interrupted when we have a desired B value. So let's see a little demo of how the microcontroller counts. We're going to start seeing the normal mode. So first, we said that we have a count. We're going to start counting from 0 to 255. And we're going to put that on this axis. And this is going to be the count. So we're going to start at 0, and we're going to go all the way to 255. This value it's stored at a location that it's called TCNT. And of course, this is a register. The name uh, means timer count. Okay, so that's the current count of the timer. And over here, we're going to have the count source. This is a very interesting topic. The count source can be different things. Most of the time, since this is a timer, the count source is going to be machine cycles. So we're going to see next that we can have different multiples of machine cycles as our count source. Basically, we can have two different count sources. We can have either machine cycles 
or we can have external events. Most of the time, again, we're going to have machine cycles. For this example, we're going to assume that the count source is a multiple of eight machine cycles. What that means is that every eight machine cycles, the timer it's going to count a one. Okay, so again, every eight machine cycles, this is going to be a plus one. And this is going to be, again, our count source. So that means that we have some period of time here. And this period of time, it's going to be in our example, it can be different again, be careful. But in our example, it's going to be eight machine cycles. When we execute the timer in normal mode, the timer, of course, it starts at zero. And then eight machine cycles later, then the count it's going to increment okay and it's going to of course become one and every count we're going to start counting another thing that we said is that we can start monitoring uh, two different values so for example we can say whenever you reach this value this is a desired value that i want to check and this value can be one register that is called o c R zero B and that value it's something that we want to check so we want to check when the timer gets to this value so of course eventually the timer it's going to uh, continue counting and it's going to reach that value so let's assume this is 120 so when the timer counts to 120 what what's going to happen is that it's going to generate if we want of course it's, it's going to generate an interrupt request. And of course, we can also have another value. And this value is called kind of the same. It's OZR0A. And when we reach this different value, it's going to be a different value. And again, the timer, the normal mode, it's even if we have reached the first value, which was 120, in the normal mode of operation, the timer is going to keep counting. So it's going to keep counting until eventually. Remember, every count means that eight machine cycles have passed in this particular example. Let's assume this other value was 200. So when we reach this other value of 200, we're going to generate another interruption request. However, in this normal mode of operation, again, be very careful, in this particular mode of operation, even if we reach value B, and even if we reach value A, the timer is going to keep counting. So in the normal mode of operation, that means that we have the maximum value, which is 255, and the timer is going to keep counting until eventually it reaches 255. When this happens, it's going to reset itself. We don't have to reset it, it's going to reset itself. So in this particular point, the timer is going to return to the zero value. And when that happens, this is also going to generate an interruption request. These are our three sources of interruptions for timer zero. This interruption request, the one that is at the very left, it's called overflow. This is a compare match A. And this over here, it's a compare match B. Now let's see the CTC mode. CTC mode stands for clear timer on compare. And this means that whenever there is a comparison that we fulfill, then the timer is going to reset. In the previous mode, which was the normal mode, the timer reset when it reached its final value. So again, we're going to have the timer count and we're going to have the source of uh, counting and as a previous example we're going to have a v value that we want to be monitoring and we're going to have an a value that of course we also want to monitor every source of counting can be again machine cycles or external events the timer is going to start counting so it's going to start doing this until eventually it will reach the v value okay i don't know which, which is the v value but it can be anything from 0 to 255. Again, remember we have the option to generate an interruption request. But this interruption, in order to generate, uh, it has to be enabled. 
So let's say that in this particular example, the interruption when the timer reaches the B value, the interruption is not enabled. So if it is not enabled, it means that even if we can have a V value to compare, it means that we are choosing not to pay attention to it. So when it reaches the V value, nothing happens. Okay, no interruption request gets done. However, again, this is because we choose to not enable this interruption. We can also choose to do check this interruption. So be careful. Then the timer is going to keep counting. And here's the interesting part of this mode. In this mode, we can or we cannot, uh, that's up to you, we can generate an interrupt uh, when we reach the A value. However, even if we do generate an interruption or we do not generate an interruption, remember this can, this is an option, this can generate an interruption request. So even if we do generate it or we do not generate this interruption request, this mode of operation says clear timer when a compare is made. In this case, the timer, the current time, it's equal to the A value that we set. Again, this value can be anything from 0 to 255. And when this happens, even if there is no interruption, this is an option, the interruption is an option, but what's going to happen is that the timer is going to reset. So we have the maximum value over here, which is 255. But in this particular mode of operation, since the timer resets here, it's going to start counting again. And again, when it reaches the A value, it's going to reset. This is the difference between the CTC mode and the normal mode. The normal mode, it's always going to count from 0 to 255. And the CTC mode, it's going to count, to count from 0 to the value that you put in the A register of comparison. So, let's see the timer counter structure. And when I say structure, I mean the registers. Uh, we saw some registers on the previous examples. But now let's see the specific names of the registers and what's the function of them. The first uh, important register is, as we saw in the previous example, TCNT, which means timer count. So it means if we say the counter, uh, it's counting from 0 to 1, so the 0 is going to be stored here, and then when it counts 1, the 1 is going to be stored here, and then when we say the timer has counted to 200, then a 200 is going to be here. Again, this is the current count of the timer. Then we have one register of comparison, which in the previous example we said it was register A. And this comparison, it's this comparison register, it's called OZR0A, which means output compare register 0 for timer 0, A. And we have this here because it says that whenever you uh, the, the, the current count matches this value A, the current count is going to be changing. The value A you're going to set up. You're going to say what you want this value to be. Let's assume this, you put 200 over here. So if you say this value is 200 and this value is 199, then you're going to ask, are those values equal? And then of course the answer is no, they're not equal. Eventually, once we get another source of counting, we're going to go to 200. And at this particular time, 200 it's going to be equal to this 200 and since it's equal we are going to generate an interrupt this is if and only if we activate this interruption we also have a comparison a comparison register b and we have the same mechanism the only difference is that this comparison although it can generate an interruption uh, remember the ctc mode always depends on the register a of comparison we also have some configuration. This configuration is done through two registers, which are called TCCR0A and TCCR0B, which stand for Timer Counter Configuration Register 0 for Timer 0, and we have the register A and register B. To clarify this, this has nothing to do with registers A and B of comparison. Inside this configuration, we have different things. We have, for instance, a compare output mode. This compare output mode modifies the behavior of two output pins. I'm showing you two external pins of your microcontroller. These two pins of your microcontroller can 
behave differently according to this setting. This pin, for instance, has something to do with this register. So with this setting, we say whenever we have a compare match with the value A or the register A of comparison, then we want the pin to do something. We want it to turn it off, we want it, this pin to turn on, or we want this pin to be toggled, to be changed. And of course, the same applies for the output pin B. We also have something that is called the mode of operation, and this is controlled by three bits. Just to clarify, this little spaces here that I put, I have put one, two, and three spaces over here. Those three spaces are because we have three bits to control eight modes of operation. So these eight options are controlled by three bits that are called WGM, and they are called WEGM because they are called waveform generation modes. We also have the prescaler or clock select. Remember when we said on the previous example that we have different ca uh, count sources? Well, this is where we select the different count sources. And I actually made a mistake here. Uh, I apologize for this. This is three bits, okay? This is, uh, this is CS one bit, two bits, and three bits. We have three bits to select the clock source, which can be, again, a multiple of the machine cycles, or it can be an external pin to count external events. Since we are counting external events, of course we need an external pin. This external pin is this one here, that it's called T1, and it's located in port D, bit number four. Then we have some setting that it's called force, com force output compare, which again has to see with the output pins OC0A and OC0B. And finally, as configuration, we have the possibility to enable the three interruptions that we were talking about. We have three bits, one is called TOIE0, which means timer overflow interrupt enable zero. We have OCIE0A, which means output compare interrupt enable of timer zero register A. And we have OCIE0B, which is the enabling of the uh, B comparison. And finally, we have some status register. This status register, it's the TIFR0. This is where we store the flags when the events happen. This is the basic structure of the timer count zero. So as you can see, the timer, it's, well, simple. The difficult part of this timer is that it has many possibilities of operation. But basically, this is what happens with the timer zero peripheral. And I have said this through the demo and the structure. Again, the current count is always stored in the TCNT0 register. It can generate three interrupt sources. Remember, these are enabled in the TIMSK0 register, which means timer mask register. And it has, of course, another register that is called TIFR0 which means timer flag register zero. And we can set the mode of operation through WGM00, WGM01, and I'm missing one bit here, sorry. We also have WGM02. It has two double buffered registers. Remember, this compares the timer count register versus OZR0A or and OZR0B. The frequency of the timer depends on the clock select settings. Remember, CS00, CS01, and CS02. And it could be either a fraction of the MAC controller frequency, which we call prescaler, or it can be an external pin, which is the pin D0 in the microcontroller. And it has two output pins, which behave according to both the WGM0 settings that we saw and the COM, which is the compare match output mode, and the FOZ, which is the force output compare. Now that we understand how the timer zero works, how do we make sure that the timer counter zero has performed its task correctly? So we have two ways. The first way is to monitor its flag. We're going to start asking the timer, have you finished counting? Have you uh, achieved value A of comparison? Have you achieved value B of comparison? And the second way is, of course, enabling interruption, which is an event-driven approach. So monitoring the flags is not the best option because we have to constantly be checking the flags with some mnemonics and also we need to manually reset flags. If we enable interruptions, of course, uh, we would have to write an interruption service routine. If we use this approach, then the flags would be turned off 
automatically. So here it's what is the modes of operation. I explain the normal mode of operation and I explain the CTC mode of operation. This top means the maximum value of the counter. And as you can see, the maximum value in the normal mode is 0xff, which is 255. And of course, this is the maximum capability of the timer. In contrast, when we have the CTC mode, the maximum value is OCRs A. That means that the value we put on register A, that's going to be the maximum value of this uh, timer. And although we have eight modes of operation, and I just explained two of two of them to you, which is the normal mode and the CTC mode, we have two configuration that says reserved. That means that we only have actually six modes of operation. The other four modes that I didn't explain, all of them are related to PWMs. So it's actually three modes of operation. We have normal mode of operation, CTC mode of operation, and PWM mode of operation. And when we put the PWM, we have different ways of doing the PWM. Here's the prescaler settings. This is also an important setting because when we put this configuration in the timer, uh, it says no clock source. That means that the timer is gonna be stopped. So this is another way we can stop or start the timer. So when we put any of these configuration, we start the timer. And this is what we call the multiples. This is the multiple would be a one. So every machine cycle we count. This is a multiple of eight, which is the example I explained, which is every eight machine cycles we count. This is a multiple of 64. So every 64 machine cycles we count. We also have the 254 option. And the maximum option we have is the 1024 multiple. So we can count multiples of 1,024 machine cycles. And the last two settings, it's when we want to count on the external T0 pin. We can either count on a falling edge or we can count on a rising edge. These are the settings or the different types of sources we can have for the timer zero. Okay, so let's see an example of this mode of operation, which of course is the most useful one, the CTC mode. The current count, it's clear when the count matches the value of OCR08. The output compare flag zero is set to one when the timer counter matches the value of OCR08 plus one. The T0V0 flag is going to be set to one where the timer goes from 255 to zero, which is the overflow. And although this shouldn't happen, it can happen. This is the, the timing diagram. Check that over here we have eight cycles, okay? we have eight cycles of the frequency and even if we have eight cycles we are generating only one cycle here so this is why we say that we count every eight machine cycles and the important part here is that the part that says the top imagine we say that ocr 0 a is equal to let's say 100 that means that this value is 100 okay and this of course is 99 and the, the interesting part here is that this is when the timer it's 999 and then at this particular moment the timer becomes 100. But see that the flag turns on not at the moment the value is 100. This is not the time when the flag turns on. It waits another period, period of the timer and then over here it turns on. So this is why we reach, of course this is when we reach 100 and it says bottom here, so that means that in this particular place, we're going, to, we're going to reset the timer. It's going to become zero. And when this happens, when the value is zero, then here is when we generate the interrupt, the interrupt source. So for example, if you want to generate a flashing LED, and we're going to use the L LED on the Arduino Uno board, and we're going to, we want to make a signal at 20 hertz with timer counter zero. And of course, you know that the Arduino Uno input output frequency is actually 16 megahertz. So the first thing that we need to do is set the WGM properly to get the CTC mode. And here I put the two registers that need to be modified, which is TCCR0A and TCCR0B. Just a clarification, we have three bits for WGM and the third bit, which is WGM02, it's located in TCCR0B. Then we need to calculate or decide the prescaler value. Remember, we can count either one, 
864-256 or 1024 machine cycles. Then we want to calculate and load the appropriate OCR0A in order to generate a 20 Hz interruption. So here's where we are going to use this particular formula. It's 1 plus OCR. In the previous slide, I told you that if we put 100, it's going to generate the interruption in the 101. So it's th this is why we have 1 plus OCR. And then the N, which is the prescaler. So every number of counts, so it's going to be machine cycles. Imagine we have OCR equals to 1. So this would be 1 plus 1, and it means that we're going to count two times if we put OCR in 1. In one. And then assume that we want to count every 8 machine cycles, so we put here 8. So what this means is that this is calculating how many machine cycles we're actually going to count. And if we want to count two counts in every 8 machine cycles, we're going to count one count. Of course, we're going to count 16 machine cycles. And if we count 16 machine cycles, we simply divide it by the number of machine cycles, then we get the frequency that we want to check. And we put a 2 here because since we want to make a flashing LED, we need to consider the time it takes to turn on the LED and then the time it takes to turn off. Then we need to enable the interruptions of OCEA A0 and of course the global interruption. Then we need to set the prescaler value. In step two, we just calculated it, but we need to leave this uh, step to the final because this will start the timer. So we cannot start the timer unless we have all the configurations properly made. And finally, of course, we have to program the interrupt service routine. And we're going to see why it says there that we're going to divide the frequency. But right now, let's follow the steps. So the first step, it's set WGM properly. So we're going, we want to put 010. Now, why 010? The reason why we um, want to put 1010 is if we go to the data sheet, uh, we're going to want to go to the timer counter 0. Here's the section for the timer counter 0. You want to press here the plus, and then you want to go to the register description. And then here in the register description, we have timer counter register A. Inside this timer counter register A, you can see that we have these two bits, which are the waveform generation mode that we were talking about. If we go back in this data sheet, we're going to find out that we have this, which is, of course, the mode of operation. And you can see that the CTC mode, this is the CTC mode. So if you check, if you want to put the microcontroller uh, timer 0 in CTC mode, then you have to put 0 in WGM02, 1 in WGM01, and 0 on WGM00. So that's why we put here uh, 010. Okay, because this is the way that we get a ZTC mode. And this is why we mentioned that WGM02 is located in TCCR0B. Because if we want to put here this information, we only need to concern to be concerned about the 1 here and the 0 here, these two bits. These two bits are stored in register 0A. Next, we said that we need to calculate and decide the prescaler value. And here it says that we're going to choose a prescaler of 1024 because in this particular way, we can count more time. And if we count more time, we're going to generate a lower frequency. Then we want to calculate the OCR0A. We have 16 millions of hertz divided by 2 multiplied by 1024, which is the prescaler, multiplied by 20, which is the 20 that we want to generate, the 20 hertz. And then we have the minus 1. This calculation is going to give us a number of 389.625. This number is greater than 255. So because of this, we cannot, we cannot store this value in OCR0A because the maximum value is 255. So we cannot generate a 20 Hz signal with timer zero, but we can generate a 40 Hz signal. And of course we use, instead of 20 in this formula, we use 40 and we get the value of 194.3125. And of course, this is not what we originally wanted. We wanted 20 Hz, but we're going to count when we make two interruptions. And when we make two interruptions, of course, we're going to have the 20 hertz signal. So a note here is that we cannot put the 194.315125. We need to put only the 194. So actually, the real frequency that we're going to achieve with this is 40 
0.064 hertz and that's because we can, we're rounding the, the calculation and we're actually putting just 194. Then of course we said we want to enable the interruptions, we want to set the prescaler value. So how do we set the prescaler value? We want to put um, CS02, CS01, and CS00 in 101. And this is because, as we saw in the previous slide, um, this is the way we can count 1024 multiples of machine cycles. And finally, we want to program the interruption service routine um, and divide the frequency, to divide the frequency by half. And this means that when we get interrupted, we do not want to turn on LED. We, want, we do not want to change the LED. We want to count two interruptions to actually uh, change the LED in the, in the Arduino. So let's go to Admiral Studio to make this program. So I'm going to create a new project. You select C instead of Assembler. You select C and you select uh, the C executable project. You could also select the C++ if you want to make an object-oriented program. Uh, in this particular video, I'm going to go with C. I'm going to put here lecture timer 0. Okay. Here we're going to put the microcontroller for the Arduino, which is the 80 mega 328p You select this, you click OK. And the first thing you want to do when you start a program, and this, is, this actually also applies for the assembly programs, you want to go and start debugging. Press this button. First, uh, just select here the simulator. You want to check the simulator here and close it and go again to play pause. And the only reason we do this is because this is the way we compile the program. And once we compile this, you want to stop this. When we compiled it, we generated or the project included, in this case Atmel Studio included the dependencies of our project, which is of, which is of course the includes that we put here. And so we you, you go to dependencies and you are going to select this file and you double click it and you're going to have a lot of definitions here. This is where you define uh, the numbers of the registers. For example, you have pin B and this register it's defined as a IO register and it's the address of this, the, uh, this register. So uh, instead of writing P, uh, address 03, you can write address uh, pin B. And this is very useful, of course. Also, we have the definition of the bits inside this, this register. So uh, we say this, the zero bit or bit zero, it's called pin B0. So for example, I'm gonna go with TCCR0A. And if I go to TCCR0A, if you remember, we saw in this video that we have the waveform generation mode. We have two bits here, the waveform generation mode 00 and 01. And we have also another four bits. So we have the definition of these bits, uh, where they are located, with bit 0, bit 1, and we have also the DCCR0A, which is the address of this, of this particular register. We're going to come back to this file, and again, the only reason we did this is because we want to read this file. Go back to this file, and the first thing you want to do is we're going to include a livery that allows us to handle interruptions. We'll see later how we do this. So the first thing is you have the int main. This is the main program. And first, the part of the code that you write here is going to be configuration code. This means that this is only going to be executed once. And this while one, it's actually an infinite loop. Okay, because it means while, and this is the condition. So it means that the condition is if one is true, and in C, one or any value different than zero, it's considered as true. So this means that while true, it means that all the time you want to execute whatever is inside here. This is similar to assembly code when you write it cycle uh, and then you put a knob here and then a relative jump cycle. So it, this particular code, it's actually the same as the while one. It's always going to be repeated infinitely. In C, you're going to stop using relative jumps, you're going to stop, stop using relative calls, and also uh, one of the most uh, maybe difficult parts of understanding it, you're going to stop using registers. The registers are going to be used by the compiler. Let's start with our, our program. The first is we're going to start with some basics of C. I'm going to start defining a function. I'm going to define a function that is void because I, it doesn't re gives me anything, it just executes some code. I'm going to call this function setup timer zero. 
And as a parameter, I'm not going to pass it anything, so I'm going to put void here also. You want to put it here because this is a declaration of function. You want to copy this function, paste it uh, below, and eliminate this, and put uh, brackets. So we want to set up the timer zero only once. We do not want to be calling this function inside this while. We don't want to put hit setup timer zero because if we put it here, it means that every time this um, this while executes, it's all, always going to be setting up the timer zero. So we want to put this function here. We want to set up timer zero. We want to set up the, the L bit. So instead of writing LDI register 16, one rotated to uh, in this case, it's going to be ddb5 and putting out ddrb uh, register 16. This is how you would have done it in, in an assembly. Instead of doing this in, in C, it's going to be much, much easier. You're just going to put ddrb and equal to 1 shifted to ddv5. These two lines of code in assembly, it's exactly the same as this line of code in C port b.5 it's an output then of course after that we're going to set up the timer zero and inside the while one in this case it's just for the simulation we're going to do simulation in this video too so you want to put asm this is for telling the program that i want to execute an, an assembly code so i want to put a knob here so this is the way we do it in c Let's start making the configuration. The first thing we said we needed to do is set up the WGM mode properly. Remember, we're going to put CTC. Okay, so we want to put a 1 in WGM01. So TCCR0A, you can press the tab to complete. So you select one of these two with your arrows. And I'm going to complete TCCR0A. And I'm going to put equal to 1 shifted to. <coughs> Uh, we said WGM01. Next, we said we wanted to put OCR0A, so we want to put OCR0A, and we want to put it to 194. Remember, this was made to uh, count or generate a 40 hertz interruption. Then, we enable the interruption, so we want to make sure that t TM is the timer mask 0, it's equal to 1, shifted to uh, OCEA0A. We're enabling the interruption of OCR0A. So that means that when the timer matches this value, then the microcontroller is going to be interrupted. And finally, remember that the, the last step is to start the timer. So when we want to start the timer, we simply said this is your 0 b Then, well, we can go here to the register description and you can see that inside the timer CCR0B, we have these three bits. And these three bits, if you go back uh, here, we said that we wanted to put 1024 as our prescaler. So we, we need to put one in CS00 and one in CS02. So instead of putting one here and one here individually, I'm gonna put a five because this is, this is a value four, and this is the value of one. So I'm gonna put here five shifted to CS00. And in this way, we write the three bits in, in, one, in one expression. We want to start counting every 1024 machine cycles of our microcontroller. Okay, here I didn't put a comment. Here is the CTC mode. I'm going to make some correction here. Here we're also modifying all the bits inside the, the data direction register. So instead of doing this, I'm going to put or equal. Or equal means that I um, just want to modify this particular bit. If any other bit is turned on, I, I want to leave it like that. Then I want to enable interruptions. So I'm going to put, I'm going to use a, an instruction that is called say. Notice that it's a little different than in uh, assembly. Instead of putting just say, we just, we, we need to put it as a function. Another way would be ASM and then put say. Okay, these two instructions are the same. That's it for the configuration. We uh, set the output. We set up the timer to do what we want. We enable global interruptions and then we do nothing. Of course, we do nothing because we're going to get interrupted. 
And remember the way we get interrupted, it's in assembly, you, put, you would put a vector, remember, of the interruption, and then put a relative jump to the ESR. This is what you would do, and then over here below, you would put something like ESR, and then at the end, you would put ready. This is what you would do in assembly. So instead of doing this, uh, this is done automatically when we include this this library so we do not uh, need to do this and instead of doing this we're going to use a function that is called actually ESR okay which means interrupt service routine and as a parameter we need a vector and this is the vector of interruption and that's the reason we open this file so you want to go in into this file control F and you're going to put vector and you're going to have here all the interruption vectors of this particular microcontroller. And you see that we have timer zero here. This is a timer zero comparison A vector. Now that you know the name, you just put timer zero comp A vect. Whenever we get interrupted, uh, this function is going to execute. Okay, this is all you need to do for interruptions in C. So basically we're all set up. The only thing we would need to do is to invert the port, the port B. And for doing that, we want to put port B and you want to put this signal here, the, this sign. Uh, I'm going to put this a little larger. You want to make sure you put this character and or uh, equal. This is an XOR, okay? And you are going to put one in port B5. Uh, port B5, XOR of bit 5. But actually, when we make an XOR of 1, comma X, we don't know X. Uh, when we do this, this is why we put a 1 here. When we do this, we actually get the NOT of X. Okay, so this is a, another way of inverting. Um, we don't use the inversion, the proper inversion, because then we would invert the whole bits, and we just want to make sure that... Uh, just this bit it's inverted because when we put an XOR of 0 comma X which are all the other bits uh, this is actually X so when you put a 0 in the XOR you get the same value and when you put a 1 in the XOR you get the inversion of the of the other value however if we do this uh, we're gonna generate a 40 Hertz signal this interruption executes at a rate of uh, 40 hertz approximately. We're going to create a variable uint 8t. This is an unsigned uh, variable of 8 bits. I'm going to name uh, this variable as number of times and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this variable at 1. When we are interrupted, the first time this program executes, the first time you get to this function, this variable is going to be 1. So if this variable is going to be 1, it means that I have been interrupted once. This is the, the first condition. So I'm going to use the switch statement instead of using the... Uh, here is uh, as if you were making the CPI. Okay, CPI register 16, comma 1. So instead of doing this and then branch if not equal, which is the way we would do it in assembly, instead we can use, use the switch code or the switch function and we're going to set switch with number of times interrupted and we're going to simply say okay we want to check if we are interrupted case one break case two break and that's it so when we enter here it means that we are we were interrupted once so when we get interrupted once we want to wait another interruption so when we get interrupted for the first time all we want to do is number of times interrupted plus plus. And since we have a break, we're not going to execute this case. We're going to get out of this interruption. We're going to be interrupted for the second time and we're going to uh, fall in this case. So when we fall in this case, we actually want to do what I told you. We want to do this. Okay, we want to invert the bit. And of course, we want to reset the variable. We want to set number of interrupted one because of course, we want to wait another two times before making the same change. And basically, that's the program. In order to simulate this correctly, you want to go to Tools, you want to go to Options, and in Tools, uh, you have here uh, an option that says Mask Interrupts While Stepping. 
when you're stepping, that means that you want to go step by step in your program, interruptions are not going to be executed. So you want to put this to false because you want to be interrupted because we're making an interruption program. You put OK, then uh, that's it. All you have to do is uh, hit play pause. Okay, you want to put here 16 megahertz if you don't have 16 megahertz. And then you just simply have to press F11. And every time you press F11, it's as if it was this button here. So every time you press this button, you go uh, one instruction at a time. So here you go to the timer. Here's what you're going to do. You can go here to the IO view. If you don't have this uh, window, you can put it with this button. It says IO view, just click it. And once you have this uh, window, just simply select the timer zero. Here you can see all the values of the timer zero. This instruction is going to put the CTC mode. So when you press uh, step into, you can see that here you put the CTC mode here. Okay, you can go again. Then here's OCR zero A. You can put here uh, hexamacet, hexamacet display. You have 184, which is the value we want to check. Then you go again. And here you have the time mask. So in the time mask here, you can put a plus here and you see that the, va the, the bit that is turned on, it's OCI -E -I zero. Okay, so you wanna check this interruption. You go again and <clears throat> here you put the prescaler and the prescaler it's on TCCR zero B. So here we have the prescaler, okay, CS zero. We have five here, one zero one, which is one thousand and twenty-four. Then we execute the say, which is the, the interruption flag. So we, this flag is going to turn on. So here it's on, and then we do nothing. Okay, nothing, 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 nothing. You can see that the cycle starts um, going up. Nothing happens, and we would have to wait a lot of time for an, an interruption to happen. So instead of that, you are going to change here. In TCCR0B, you want to change this, which is the prescaler. We're going to modify this to be 1. Okay, this is just for the simulation. We want the simulation to be faster. So it means that every one on machine cycle, the count is going to increment. So let's see. Here's the count. The count is 0. So I'm going to press F11. And you can see that it's 2 now. The reason why it's 2 is because not only we are executing an ASM, we're also executing the while, which is a branch if not equal or a branch if equal. You can actually see that if you press this button, which is the disassembly, you press this, you here have the, the ASM, and then you can see you have a relative jump, which is a relative jump of the while. And we go back to the program and we press F11 again. You can see that the timer count starts to be modified every time I press it. And in order to make the execution even faster, you can actually modify this value. You can put 190 here to be closer to 190. Remember, this is the comparison. We want to compare if this value is equal to this value. So I press F11. Then a comparison is done. So when a comparison is done, I should go to the interruption. So if I press F11, you see how we jump to the interruption. Okay, we jump to the interruption, and we're gonna check. We want to check if this value. And I'm going to put here a watch, so uh, right click, add watch, so to see the value of this variable, number of times interrupted. So it is 1 because I, I initialize this with 1. I press F11, of course, and the only thing I do is I increment. You can see that now it's 2, and then I go to the break, and then, of course, I go again to the to doing nothing. Okay. Again, if you want to make this a little faster, you write again 190, then you press F11, you get interrupted. Uh, now you're going to go again to the switch. Since the value now is 2, I'm going to go to the second case. And here is the important part. Here's the XOR number. So you go to port B. This is the bit where the LED is. So this LED should be on. So you press F11, and you can see that it turns on. Then you make number of times interrupted 1. You return to doing nothing. So in order to see if this bit turns off, I'm going to modify this value to 2 just to simulate it and I'm going to change again the timer 0, the current count I'm going to put it in 190, step into, I get interrupted. Uh, since I modified this variable it's as if I was interrupted for the second time which is not the case but this is just for simulation to see if the port actually turns off. I step into it, 
you see you get into the modification of the port you go to the port and this port should be turned off with the same instruction so you put here and you can see that it turned off okay so that's it i recommend that you program this into your arduino and you will see your led blinking at a very fast at a very fast rate thank you very much for watching this video uh, see you next time